How are you guys? Welcome back to Wargaming China, the free channel where I platform my understandings of the war of resistance against Japanese aggression in China from 1931 to 1945. You know, and I do this for um, toy soldier enthusiasts, wargamers, armchair historians, and really anybody who likes a bit of obscure history. And of course, I um, have a collection of toy soldiers and I use it to demonstrate the battles. Now, what we're looking at today is the town of Dem Shen Kou. It's August 1937. Tianjin and Beiping have fallen. The Chinese army has indeed headed east, as historians will tell you, but not to reinforce the central plains, not to enter the central plains, to seal off the Yanshan Mountains from any Japanese advance into Shenzhi province and to secure the Beiping Suyan railroad line. Now, Tang Enbo is given command of the uh, 7th Army Group, consisting of the 13th and 17th Armies. Now, the 13th Army consists of the 89th and 4th Division. Both divisions are um, Germanized divisions or semi-Germanized divisions. You know, they're not fully Germanized, so their organization is that of the Germanized divisions, but their equipment is, um, is a hodgepodge. Now, if we go back to understand this campaign properly, the Nankuo campaign, we have to look back at the Japanese occupation of Manchuria and the um, which was the first which was Operation Neka and then the second part of Operation Neka which was the um, the occupation of Jaha, Jehol and a push down the um, Shanghai, Shanghai Guan Pass to Beiping itself. Now um, as we know, the 29th, the 29th Army resisted the Japanese advance in Operation Neka, which was part of the Great Wall Operation. And uh, by, by the time that Beijing and Tianjin have fallen, elements of the 29th Army are just a few miles from this location at uh, Gebu Get. Oh, at another pass, I think Gebshu Kuo Pass. And um, and on the far side of the mountains are the um, on the Yanshan side once you've once you've passed once you've taken the train and on the Suyan railroad line you will go through the Ju Yong Guan Pass. And uh, this pass takes you all the way through the Yanshan Mountains into Shanxi province. And that, that part of the railway line is still held by Chinese forces. And those forces will be under, uh, under pressure from uh, the Kwantung Army uh, and the Jehol Expeditionary Force, as well as many elements of Mengjiang Mongolian Independence Forces. Um, in the t about eight divisions worth of cavalry, which uh, took a couple of thousand men to a division. Um, so if we look at the Nankuo campaign, that it runs from the eighth of August until the twentieth of August, nineteen thirty-seven, and um, this Dem Shenkou is the easternmost flank of the seventh army of the thirteenth army. And it was held by the 530th Infantry Regiment of the 629th Division, Brigade of the 89th Division of the Chinese Army. And uh, the commander is uh, Colonel Nida. Now, um, Colonel Nida is very fortunate that um, Chiang has taken this operation seriously and sent two divisions of good troops 
of which he is commander of one of those, uh, an officer in one of those divisions, but also artillery and communications equipment. And this is going to be vital. Um, this is one of the first battles where the Chinese will have a solid communication line un uninterrupted along their front, at least on the Nankuo sector of their front. And the Nankuo sector of their front is about 20 kilometers long. Nankuo is at the center. Demsheng Kuo is, at the, is in the east. And in the west is Bei Yang Chen. Now, Nankuo is the central position and it is the key position with railroad just in front of the town and the town squat in the middle of the valley itself. Um, the Chinese at Nankok Kou hold the flanks of the mountains too, inside the valley. Now, um, here at Dem Shang Kou, the mountains didn't lend themselves that much to the Chinese defense. And there is now they are very steep mountains going up to 900 meters tall. And, um, both sides in this battle, but more so the Japanese, will wish they had mountain troops. Because although this campaign is only a 20 day campaign, it is, it is intense combat. The, the, the Japanese are suffering logistically. There's rain and mud, and these roads that you see on the table, you should really just think of them as bullock tracks, you know, ox, ox carts, tracks for ox carts, not, not roads, not part, just paths. And um, indeed, the, the roads are so bad that um, wherever the Japanese, when the Japanese army, the Beiping Railway Garrison Army of the Japanese advance from Beiping north to try to break the Chinese defences at, at along the main on the Nankuo line, they are formed by the 5th Infantry Division and the 11th Mixed Brigade with uh, tank, artillery, cavalry and armoured cars in support. Um, the, the 28 days of combat here along the line of the um, 13th Army will result in um, 20 days of heavy combat and the town of Nankuo will change hands several times. Um, it, is not, it is only late in the battle that the Japanese managed to take control of Nankou Station. And then when they, when they have done that, they, can, they then proceed to use that to offload tanks and um, tracked engineering vehicles. Um, it, is, it, is that, it is at that juncture that uh, Nankawu falls for the final time on the 19th of August. And even though Chinese forces are inflicting severe casualties because they still hold the hills on either side of the valley, and, it, and, a war, and the Japanese forces going through a war within rifle range, the, the Japanese still managed to bring up enough artillery to flush those positions out. And we look at the Nanko, historians will say the Nanko U campaign, or the sector of it that goes from, as I said, from Dem Sheng Ko U to Bai, Bai Yang Cheng, is, is a testimony to the um, bravery of the Chinese forces. Um, by the end of the battle, ammunition is very short. In short supply. Um, I must say that even though um, Nan Nankau itself fought, fought, it wasn't, it, that wasn't the end of the, uh, it wasn't the reason that the Chinese army were retreating. Further to the west, the uh, 17th Army of the 21st, 84th, and 72nd Division had fought till annihilation. They'd been pushed back into, mount into the mountains themselves and delayed the, and delayed the, the Japanese in brutal combat and indeed the uh, if we look at the 17th army and its defense of its positions and trying to stop the Japanese advance through the Yanshan mountains 
it's, it, it really is a case of uh, bayonets versus sword and, and grenades. Those are the weapons used in that fighting because the Japanese are short of sword of ammunition and, and the Chinese have not all. Um, so in this, in, in this sector of the battlefield, Dem Sheng Kou, the first probe by the Japanese occurred with cavalry and armored cars on the 8th of August. Now, this probe, although heavy, was just, as I said, a probe, but it did, it, it was subsequently followed by quite intense and regular Japanese air attacks. Now, on the 10th of August, the Japanese again attacked and uh, this time they attacked with a thousand infantry roughly battalion strength armored cars and cavalry now this is this attack again is repulsed now the forces so far that have been um, that have been probing Dem Shen Kuo were cavalry heavy. But on the morning of the 12th, the 11th mixed brigade attacked with its full force at Dem Sheng Kuo. Now. Japanese Mixed Brigade is two infantry regiments, engineers, cavalry, plus this, this time they had armoured support. And um, the battle raged fiercely. But by the end, as, sorry, I'll get back to something. So the battle itself found that you see, we look in the Pacific and we always see the Japanese attacking at night. But in China, they're always attacking during the day. And as they move over the central plains, it's flatland. Um, they seem to lager at night. They withdraw from the fighting. They lager up at night and they re-attack the next day. So um, the, the Chinese knew that the 11th, the full 11th mixed brigade was on its way. Um, on the morning of the 12th, there was a fog and as the fog um, cleared it revealed the Japanese attack so um, the men of the 530th regiment <clears throat> held this town for the entire course of the campaign and at the end of the campaign the 13th Army withdrew from, from these positions in good order. Now, as I said, this campaign is, um, is difficult to understand because, because the mountain range separates some of the fronts. But um, I'm just going to give you a quick look at the forces I'm using. So. Um, in order to represent the the Japanese, uh, the Chinese artillery. Now, the Chinese Seventh Army Group had had the regular artillery of Chinese of the Chinese divisions that it were formed from it, but it also had attached to it two artillery regiments. So, um, and that with the communications network and the use of mines and anti-tank ditches is what helped the men of the 530th hold this position against um, overwhelming attack in terms of um, manpower and firepower. Um, I wanted to show you this campaign, because um, this battle, because it sometimes seems that the Nankou campaign is overlooked. And I think it's because, as I said, it, it seems to be that you have to look at three different campaigns or three different fronts in order to understand 
the significance of this battle. And let's remember, this battle starts on the on the 8th of August. So this is, um, again, it's the Japanese attacking. It's not the Chinese. This is not a Chinese assault. This is a Chinese move forward into defensive positions and awaiting the Japanese. So this is, again, this, is, this could still be the war of deniability that you talk about until the actual, that I talk about, until the actual fighting breaks out in Shanghai. Um, because I haven't seen any order, cut orders from the government for the Japanese to be advancing here. You know, it's the Kwantung army again. They're, they're advancing, they've seen their tactical position, their strategic position. They know they've got forces on two sides of the mountains. They can push down the mountains and through them, and they're going to do it. Um, the armor I chose was uh, some OS models, uh, Type 89s. Now, I want to talk about the armor available to the um, Japanese forces on this side of the, side of the railway track. Um, I'm talking about forces of the um, 4th Tank Regiment. Now, Japanese Tank Regiment is um, of three battalions of tanks. And at this time, a battalion of Japanese tanks would have been uh, 12 Type 89s, 13 Hargos, uh, 12 Type 90, and 12 Type 94 Tankettes. The uh, the cavalry. Well, uh, the cavalry. I don't have any real. I don't have any actual horse mounted Japanese cavalry, but I do have cavalry elements in the shape of these uh, Type ninety three uh, combat cars. And an armored car is my uh, homemade. My homemade uh, Vickers shoot Vickers Horsley. Sumida. Now, um, I hope I'm not making you sick with the camera. With the camera there. Um, so, because with the use of artillery and with mines, the um, the 530th Infantry Regiment was able to uh, was able to hold. And uh, this battle. I'll try to do it in uh, eight turns. It'll be an eight turn game. Um, mountain ranges are pretty much uncrossable. And um, as you see, even though it's a Germanized division that I've put on the table, they're not actually, um, not all the troops are in a Germanized uniform. Now I did give them one pack 36. And the reason for that is there's four in the division, plus an army, an army might have four more. So I didn't feel too bad about putting a pack 36 here and an Ulicorn S20, 20 millimeter auto cannon as the infantry gun. Um, so I'm going to play this today. And tomorrow, because it's public holiday in Australia, if I get the chance, who knows, work might call. But um, until then, take care, hit that subscribe button, see you later.